so time to get rolling. Looks like we have a bunch of people here. Um, so Bobby, you want to take it away? Yeah, we uh, we have joining us uh, today, Andrew Snavely. Andrew, we're glad to have you here. Um, Thank you. So let's start out. Um, uh, tell us uh, where's home for you? Where are you located, Andrew? Uh, we are located about, oh, I'd say two hours north of Seattle. Okay, so you're getting up close to Canada there. We are getting close to Canada. Mm -hmm. And and how long have you been uh, long arming? Uh, we have had a long arm for just shy of two years now. Okay, so we're we're, we're brand new. Okay. Mm -hmm. So did you did you get your long arm machine specifically to run a business, or did that kind of develop? We did. So when we got the long arm. Um, my husband and business partner, he's uh, an enrolled tribal member of MHA Nation in North Dakota. And he makes Lone Star quilts and sends them back home for ceremonies in the culture. And But he was hand quilting all of those. And he just, he could not keep up. He would come out and his hands would be kind of balled up and we'd have to open them back up. And so we got the long hand arm. Quilting, not not with a, a sewing machine or anything? There's hand quilting? No, no, he was hand quilting. Oh. You don't see that very much anymore. No, no, not very much. So we got the long arm in order to kind of keep up with that production. And shortly after we got the long arm, we had somebody just stop by and say, hey, would you long arm something for me? And then that just kind of became a separate division. So I run the long arming operation and he runs the custom quilting operation. Okay. And uh, and you, I, I'm assuming you have a gamble machine. Uh, yep. How did you end up uh, going with the choosing to go with the gamble? So we were kind of going back and forth. We knew we wanted to run it as a business. We knew that the machine needed to survive that much use. And the name that just kept keep popping up was gamble, 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 gamble. Um, you know, they said it's a generational machine. They're they're built to last. And so that's what we settled on was was the gamble Statler Ascent. Mm-hmm. No, you just went right for the cream of the crop there, didn't you? You did. Mm -hmm. So, um, so t I'm I'm curious just because this it it went by pretty quick, and I'm not sure that I understood it. So he's he's a a, a tribal member, mm -hmm. and he had been making quilts. And are are these a fairly traditional design, or? Yeah, so it's just it's called the Lone Star quilt. Uh, oh, so it's, yeah, center star, and so he was doing a Baptist fan quilting on them by hand, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and oh, we just that, keep them. that would be at least what six months for each one, or he he was able to turn a queen size out in six weeks. Okay, well, uh, no wonder his hands were nothing yeah. all day. Oh, yeah, all day. Okay, yeah, uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense to me. So um, tell me about your first customer. Uh, do you remember who that was? Somebody who who's, who realized you had a machine and... Yeah, it was actually a former employee of mine. She had just finished making a memory quilt um, with jersey and t-shirts. And um, I, I don't remember how we got on the topic of conversation, but yeah, she was like, oh, you know, could you quilt this for me? And we we're like, yeah, absolutely. So... That's just kind of how it started. And we were like, hey, this is this is pretty fun. Like I, I enjoy this. I don't I'd never quilted before. Uh Charlie does all the quilting. He's been doing it for his whole life. Yeah, but running the machine, running the long arm and doing the designs and from custom to edge to edge, I fell in love with it. I, I love the process. So for this memory quilt that you quilted, was it you that did the quilting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me about when you, when she came to pick it up, when she first saw it, tell me about how that went. Oh, she was ecstatic. So her, her grandfather, I believe it was for her grandfather, uh, was into discus as, as a sport, a main sport. And I actually found a pattern, took a while to find a pattern of discus, a man throwing a discus. Yeah, when we found it, and that's what I ended up putting on the quilt, and she just loved it, just loved it. She was ecstatic, and then we bound it for her. So when she came to pick it up, it was done. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of a lot of people don't wouldn't know how to bind it anyway. I I always have to get somebody to do binding on any quilt for me. I've yeah, never well, our, our customers like it when we tell them we have we have binding services and they're like, really? Like, yeah. yeah, we'll bind it. You drop it off in pieces and then pick it up and it'll be a full quilt. Yeah, awesome. Nice. So when you uh when you first started this uh, long arming uh part of your business at, at the time did you did you have a feeling of what kind of um customer base you would have out there uh was there enough business available in your area uh to support that you know like I said when we started it was originally just to support the star quilts and so we hadn't really put much thought into long arming for for customers right and when we decided we were gonna we were gonna take a look at that and see if it would support uh, its own operation um yeah when we started pulling up the quilt guilds in the area the quilting shows I'm 20 minutes from uh the Laconer quilt museum so we saw very quickly that there's a prolific amount of, of quilters in our area. So do one or both of you have other jobs besides your work from home or are you uh, strictly self-employed? We are strictly self-employed. So besides our quilting operation, we also run an urban farm. Mm -hmm. Which I was checking out your website earlier. Before we get to the end, I'll make sure that we give people the website address. I don't I don't think they're going to be ordering boxes of tomatoes, probably. No, I don't think so. But I thought I really enjoyed looking at your website. I thought it was nice. Thank you. you. Know, vegetable slash quilting business. Yes. <laughs> so nice. so uh, I'm going to skip over one of the questions as to whether you have the same machine today, because you just got it less than two years ago. Yeah, I would hope so. Um, how, how did you find your customers? The first one kind of fell in your lap. It was somebody you already knew. It did. Yeah, the first one fell in our lap. And then we started making some business cards and just trying to spread the word. So we went to like, you know, Joanne Fabric and the different fabric stores and just putting our, our cards on their, their pegboards. Um, and then we started talking with some of the smaller individualized shop owners and leaving cards and brochures and kind of partnering with them. Um, to get our work, our name out there, but also to set up a drop-off location, a drop-off and pick-up location. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our customers enjoyed that. So instead of having to drive here to meet with us or mail them in and wait for us to get the quilt top, they can go to their local fabric store and drop off a quilt. And they reach out to us and say, hey, you have a quilt? And then we drive up and pick it up and mm -hmm. it's much more comfortable for them. Pick up a little yardage while you're there. Yeah. Uh, what what kind of arrangement do you have with the with the fabric stores, or is it different for each one? It's different for each one. So we have there's one here on the island, um, and honestly, we'd lived here for almost ten years and didn't even know it existed. And then somebody had told us about it, and we went out there and talked with them. It's family run, and so we left some cards with them, and then kind of in turn we advertise for them as well. So if people are looking for wide back backings and we'll just send them out towards the island because it's less than 10 minutes from us. Mm. And so, and here in town, we don't have a fabric store or a quilting store in town. So they have to leave the area in order to get that. So right. it was good. It was a good uh, partnership with them. Yeah. Well, I think, I think uh, small businesses, in a lot of ways, we're inclined to stick together, you know, right? because, I mean, everybody knows where Walmart is. You don't have to. Right. Help them. <laughs> well, Andrew, um, do, do you have an estimate about how many hours per week that you spend actually doing quilting that part of the business? Uh, yeah, with the exception of our of our guild days, and that usually falls within a couple of days, I'm in the studio full time. So eight to 10 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So how, how many quilts per month does that represent? I think that varies uh, depending on what quilts. I try to limit the amount of custom quilts I do because of the, the length of time that it takes. Consuming, yeah. um, so we do a lot of edge to edge border work. 
I do custom, but I try to limit the number per month. But I know since we've had the machine, we've done over 600 quilts. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That is. That is. <laughs> it's busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so do you, would you say you do 90% uh, edge to edge or? Yeah, I'd say 90% edge to edge, maybe 5% semi-custom and 5% fully custom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you charge, um, do you charge by the hour or by the square inch? How does that work for you? For edge to edge, we charge by the square inch. And then for custom, uh, I charge by the hour. What What is the square inch rate going for on edge to edge? Uh, it's got to be higher there than in the middle of the country because your expenses are higher. Yeah, so we start at three cents per square inch for edge to edge, but that includes your batting and your thread. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And um, so, and at, at your shop, you also, you, you provide uh, all the batting and wide back fabrics and things like that. So I do have, we, we keep a supply of fabrics in the, the piecing shop. Not a lot to sell mostly for our custom quilts. Um, mm -hmm. We do sell our fabrics for backing, but I don't carry any extra whites. So the wide backs, I'll piece a backing for a customer, but we don't usually carry the wide backs. And then we do carry batting for sale. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, um, and and like you had indicated before, uh, if somebody needs help with binding or they don't know how to piece their back or, um, I mean, sometimes I know that a quilt top actually has to be taken apart before it can be put together. Yes. So I, I guess you guys have the skills to do all of that. So what's what's really been the hardest part of of growing this business? Honestly, it's been getting our name out and really getting people to, to come to us. It it took a while for people to kind of trust us. And I was telling you guys a little bit, like when we started joining the guilds, that was really nice to see the quilting communities in our area. But both my husband and I are over six feet tall and the only men in our guild. And so most of the time, well, especially at the beginning, they're like, ah, do you know where you're at? Are you in the right spot? <laughs> Are you lost? <laughs> the NRA meeting is in the next room. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, once once we got to know everybody, then more and more of the of the quilters in the area started coming to us, which has been awesome. And and how long has it been since you started uh, uh, getting involved with the guilds? We've been involved, we started joining guilds and being involved in the guilds at the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. And have you, have you noticed, have you had fruit from that? Do you notice a difference with uh, being Absolutely. involved? Absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've doubled our business load uh, just from guild members. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel that the guild, uh, the guild has been the most, um, uh, business rewarding uh i mean uh more than you know cards or whatever else you advertising you've done i think for direct for direct clientele the the guilds have definitely been it's it's hard to it's hard to pinpoint how the cards are doing or how word word of mouth is doing um but definitely the guild seeing them interacting with them and then bringing our quilts our own the ones that we've made to every single quilt show and doing show and tell every single quilt show, something new so they can see what we do has mm -hmm. really helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, quilters are very visual. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's why we enjoy the quilts because we like to look at them. Right. And so uh, that makes a lot of sense. I've always felt like the show and tell is, is really the only important part of the guild meeting. Sometimes they've got real boring stuff. I mean, they just do. Just tell us how you feel. Well, I was at a guild meeting one time and they were going over the line items in the budget. And I was like, oh, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say the, the second part of that 
for your question, the, the struggle is when a customer brings you a quilt top, when you're piecing a quilt, most people get an idea of what they want the quilt to look like in their head. But articulating that idea to a long armor is complicated. So trying to pull what they want out, what the, you know, their imagination is telling them and make that a reality to for them. That that was a learning curve for me to try to understand their artistic eye and be able to put that onto their quilt. That's a skill that you have had to develop, uh, getting out of their mind and imagination. Right. What they're talking about. Yeah. I think part of that is interview skills to some degree, because somebody may say something and they think they've communicated it and you think you've heard it. But mm -hmm. unless you ask a clarifying question, you know, to really pin it down, it can be, it can be, I know that there's lots of times that people do pick up a quilt that's finished from a long arm quilter and because they're real nice and they don't want to be offensive, they, they pick it up and they write the check and they leave. But in the back of their mind, they're thinking, this isn't what I thought it was going to look like, you know, right. they'll, they'll actually seldom bring it up because they kind of know to some degree it was their own fault for not communicating clearly enough or whatever. But but I think uh, for you to be really good at your job, part of it is is quizzing people real hard on right. what their vision really is. Yeah, yeah I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm interrogating them and it's like, I'm just, I want to get a real good feeling, you know, knowing what their idea was, where this quilt is going, what its intended purpose is, is all things that will help me design their quilt out the way the way that want, they want it to be. Because I... I would dread having somebody leave my studio and being like, man, he sucks. Mm -hmm. And Andrew, um, for those uh, who are watching this, which a large percentage of them are people who are starting businesses, do you have any, have, have you, have you been doing it long enough to have any um, stories of any negative experiences or any difficult difficulties in dealing with customers or oh, difficult customers he's done 600 quilts he's got a story yeah i, I think the biggest one it, for me at least was there were there's a lot of hobby long armors in the area uh who charge little to nothing and mm -hmm. trying to run a business and you know my prices aren't going to be you know what mrs jones is charging down the street who does one quilt a month um so that that we've yeah i've had a few customers butt heads and i've had it i've unfortunately i've had a few just not bring quilts back because i can't keep i can't lower my price to what somebody would somebody else would charge who just does it as a hobby who only charges enough to be able to buy the material for the next quilt mm -hmm. and i have to pay my mortgage yeah but mortgages are pesky things that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have a question that is it it's one I've not asked anybody on the uh, on these interviews before, but since you've only had your machine a couple of years, I wonder if you could tell us I don't know what you're gonna say, but I'm just I just feel like asking the question anyway. How hard was it for you to learn to use the machine? Well, uh the software, in, it feels a lot like a CAD system, an architectural CAD system, um, kind of a simplified version of that. And I, in my previous job, uh, used CAD a lot. And so learning the system was not very difficult for me. So what uh, were the hard parts, though? Because obviously, okay, I, I can see that the software would have been a snap for you. Mm -hmm. What were the hard parts? The hard parts for me were was learning how to manipulate nodes, you know, really understanding how to manipulate nodes um, and doing pattern design myself. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it kind of the software feel can feel a little clunky when you're starting out making your own patterns. But once you get really comfortable with nodes and all the drawing features, it's like at one point it just goes click 
Now you're doing things though that people who've had their machines for 10 years have still never designed a pattern. People mm -hmm. who've had their machines for 20 years have never designed a pattern. Is it um did you find all of the resources that you needed to learn the software just within the software itself? Yeah, so within the software, and then prior to my machine's arrival, they send you um, the links to the different videos and the educational por portals to kind of get familiar with it prior to the machine coming. And the moment those links came in, that's that's all I did is I sat down and I watched all those videos and I read the manuals and I had Sam downloaded on my computer and I was playing with it. I was like, I'd rather sit on my computer here and play with the software because I can't really break it. And then once this came in, I knew what I was doing. So they dropped off the, the machine. They set it up. They walk you through all of the, the maintenance and, and basic information. And my husband, Charles, comes in when they leave with a quilt top and says, go. And so I had a quilt done that for that very first day. Fantastic. So for the people watching, do you, uh, it sounds like you think that uh, learning, becoming familiarized with uh, the system and the software is kind of important, maybe before you get the machine even? Well, we give people access to the class two weeks before delivery for that very purpose, because... Right. If, and some of them do not even... I know, it. but if the delivery guy shows up and you're already warmed up, then he can basically just basically make sure you're not going to do something stupid like drive it into a ditch. Right. <laughs> so but yeah, no, absolutely. I think I mean this is a this is a business. So the longer we take to learn the machine, the longer we take to learn the software, the longer it's going to take to start turning a profit. Mm -hmm. And that educating yourself is part of the investment that you put it into it. Abs absolutely. There, I have not stopped learning. I mean, like you guys said, I've only had it for a couple of years. Every quilt has, has kind of taught me something new, something different to, to look at, something different way to approach things. Mm -hmm. So, So who's been your biggest cheerleader? Who's been your support system? And it might be, uh, it might be, I don't know, uh, customer family uh who's who's been behind you um so my husband so he's if i don't have a customer quilts on the machine he's usually running from the piecing machine going i have another one i have another one i have another one uh so we kind of support each other that way uh and my my family's been great and especially now that we're in the the guilds and we're interacting with the community and they've opened up and kind of let us in. That's that's been a reward itself, is to really you know be part of the quilt, quilting community. In fact, we'll be at a quilt, our very first quilt show this this coming week. Mm -hmm. And it'll a little nerve wracking having something on display, but in those in those guilds in those quilter groups, you meet some of the kindest people. I mean, the, some of the best people are there. And also, there's always that one lady, and you wonder who let her in the club. <laughs> you know what I mean? You better. Yep, I, th I think I think each guild has that, that one lady. <laughs> but at the same time, each guild has that one that one lady that feels like your grandma, and she brings treats and she gives you a, a big hug every time. And I love that too. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. But, but even the mean ones can teach you something. Mm -hmm. True. True. So. Uh, so tell me about the this being a, a business owner and, and running this long-arm quilting business. And now that you have control over your schedule and control over your income, what what has that meant to you in your life? I love that. I mean, being your own boss and setting setting your own schedule is there's nothing like it. So my my husband's a morning person one of those obnoxious wake up and start singing and dancing i am not i i am lunar powered i am a nighttime person and so it's nice because i can go to work in the evening or at nighttime when i have my energy 
and then he's up in the morning and it it just works so well and we have a 15 year old who's you know doing sports and running around so having us both available to to be present with him is is awesome mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so can you think of, i know you you've been doing this for a couple of years um is there is there anything you can think of that information that you wish you would have had when you first started uh what should somebody have told you but they weren't there to tell you yeah hmm a warning you should have been given encouragement you should have been given information you should have been given you know nothing really co comes to mind i i'd say I'd say I'd go back to the pulling ideas out of people. Like, had I known that, it, I mean, it, it's, you really have to kind of pull ideas out of them or curtail ideas. Because some people come in and they're like, I want this and this and this and this and this. And you're like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> you're, you're cool to wall hanging. I, don't, I can't put all that on there. Um, if you're not a people person, get out, join a guild talk to people, get comfortable talking to people. And now it's going to make your world a lot easier. Um, not a people person, become one. Well, get more comfortable. I mean, you can't become a people person uh, if you're not, but get more comfortable because you are selling your business and you're advertising and you're networking. And it's it that's a full-time job all by itself. And then you throw on, you know, your, all your online, your website development, your social media. Um, we film and fo photograph everything that goes on the long arm. So, you know, learning that software and learning editing. And so there's, yeah, there's aspects of the quilting industry that nobody really talks about. It's behind the scene. They talk about the quilting. They talk about the long arming, but they don't talk about everything else that's behind it. Taxes, business, licenses. Yeah. Once once you get the right people in place and you have your lawyer and you have your accountant and everything's organized, the quilting is at the, the top point there. And you're not divided and spread out over the week going, oh, did I pay the taxes? I think I did, you know. <laughs> well, we did get uh, we have a comment from y Yolanda said that uh, just hearing what you're saying has been very encouraging to her so uh, thank you yolanda for sharing that yeah i thought we had a question but in fact we had an encouragement so well, thank uh, you um i was gonna uh comment just because you mentioned all the other aspects of running a business if uh if somebody does want to have help with that we have a uh, a program that wasn't available when you got your machine it's called accelerate and uh it loads a whole bunch of classes in to your training portal that are that handle things that you wouldn't know how to handle if you don't have business experience and it's basically just a a great big shortcut and uh the i think my favorite part of it though is you get a 12-month coaching program where you get one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh mentoring with somebody uh who's got the chops to help you with all those problems so that you can um you know avoid a bunch of the pitfalls that are normal so if That's somebody awesome. wants to get that, they can look it up on gamble.com. Um, oh, it looks like Shandy posted the link to, to the chat there. But it's uh, info.gamble.com slash accelerate. Um, the, uh, I was going to ask you one other question uh, earlier, and I, I kind of buzzed right past it, I think. And, and this is a question that a lot of people struggle with the question of, you know, where, where am I going to find the money to get a machine? Obviously we have lenders. Uh, how did you guys uh, decide to handle the purchase of the machine? Cause that's a big chunk. It, yeah, it, it was a big chunk. Um, we, we loan from our personal side, we loaned our business, the money for the gamble and then we bought it outright. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're still paying yourself back for that, probably. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So for us, that made the best sense. So instead of taking a loan out um, and paying somebody else the interest, 
we loaned our company the money and we pay us the interest. So mm -hmm. we kind of became our own bank. Mm -hmm. And one of the popular options that people always tell us that they're using is, uh, and I don't, you know, obviously details, you have to talk to somebody who's an expert, but I know a lot of people uh, will do a, uh, a loan out of their retirement account because the uh, retirement account, uh, you'll, you have to pay it back. Uh, but it's a loan from you to you. And so all the interest goes to yourself, which is nice. They yeah. usually have a small fee every year for administering it, but it's like 50 bucks a year or something. It's not a big deal. Yeah, being if if you can, being your own bank is is a nice way to go. And there's the whole tax situation on the back end that really benefits the the owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what advice would you give to somebody who is, uh, listen to your story and they are, they're nervously considering, I think I could do this. I might want to do this. I would love to do this if I could make it a reality. What advice would you give to that person? Um, well, uh, when I started, I never quilted at all. Not, not a lick. I'd never... You started I mean, from scratch two years ago. Yeah, started from scratch. Um, I, I'd never quilted. I maybe sewn a button on, you know, in elementary school. And if I can do it and learn it, then honestly, as long as you put in the effort and you treat it like a business, you're going to do awesome. Mm -hmm. Like you really just jump in. Don't be afraid of it. And if you don't have a customer quilt in your studio, throw one of yours on or throw some fabric on there and try the different features out. Drop the belts, try some free motion. It's it's so fun. So and and you, of course, you, you don't know everybody in the country or world situation, but in general, you you feel like somebody who kind of has a heart to start a quilting business, you think you feel like in, in general that it's doable, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I, I used to think that the quilts were just kind of going away. The, the craft was going away. And now that I have both feet in the, in the quilting community, it's not going away. <laughs> going nowhere, yeah. No, it's not going away. And from what, so one of the guilds I'm in is a long arming guild. Uh, and it's just long armors. And what I'm seeing is uh, the older long armors are starting to retire. And I, as they've retired, I'm having more customers come in to me saying, my long armor is retired and you are recommended. And so I have, I have one about, I'm about to load today and that's exactly what happened. Her long armor is retiring and we're not taking any more quilts. So yeah, absolutely get get in there and and do it. One note, one thing that I've often seen is that people will build a business, um, and part of the goal for building that business is that they want to justify and pay off the machine and mm -hmm. maybe get the, get the kids through college and stuff like that. But as they get a little bit older and the machine is long since paid off. A lot of times then they kind of like, well, I want to just do the ones for a couple of my close friends and do my own quilts, you know, because mm -hmm. in life, one of the real luxuries that we have here as Americans is we can kind of do what we want. Yeah. We can, you know, if you if you put in some effort, you can do what you want. So that's yeah. cool. And we kind of jumped in with a different thought. I, yeah, I want to pay this machine off i want to reimburse our 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 savings you know for that loan i want to reimburse that but our goal is to get that second machine mm -hmm. and so we're we're halfway to our second machine mm -hmm. and in two years that's awesome mm -hmm. so yeah hopefully soon the, the company itself will pay for the second machine that we won't have to then loan the money back in and do that over again. Right. And your time will definitely be spent more efficiently with two machines because absolutely you know, there'll always be one of them that's ready for a bobbin or a roll forward. Right. Um, 
Okay. All right. Well, that's all the questions that we had for you today. Um, I really appreciate you sharing your story with us yeah. and, and the encouragement. I think, uh, you know, we haven't had very many people that started their business post pandemic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, cause it kind of is a different world that we're working. It is. And so I really, really appreciate you being with us today. Now, uh, I'd mentioned before that I'd visited your website and, uh, uh, it, <laughs> the first thing I saw was, uh, tomatoes and what looks like uh, zucchini or cucumbers. I'm not sure which, and I wasn't sure I was at the right website, but it is birdsbillmercantile.com. Mm -hmm. like the bill of a bird uh mercantile.com and uh, you've got a lot of stuff there about your quilting as well as the farming which is really cool i would and if people want to check you out on social media where do they do that yeah we're on facebook instagram and tiktok and soon uh, we just started a, a youtube channel so we'll start posting some youtube channels on basic how to's and then work our way from there and what term would they use to to find you on those places uh birdsville mercantile is on all social media so at birdsville mercantile uh on all social media platforms awesome excellent all right well thank you so much for uh joining us today and uh if you've enjoyed this episode don't forget to subscribe and uh, we will be back next week uh, with another victim, interviewee. <laughs> Thank you and have a nice night. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.